Thanks for joining us here on Sun News Live. It's all over. A week of torment and terror in Boston finally came to an end after police find and arrest the final suspect. The FBI poster pretty much sums it up. Captured after police put Boston in a state of lockdown yesterday, 19-year-old Jokar Sarnayev had nowhere left to run. And now that he's been captured alive, Sarnayev could be the only hope police have to find out why this all took place. Beatrice Vaisman has been tracking the story for us today, and she joins us now once again from our Toronto studio. And Beatrice, Boston uh, must be feeling a sense of relief today. Yes, they certainly are, Brian. That suspect you just mentioned, 19-year-old Zakhar Tsarnaev, is uh, currently in a Boston hospital where he's being treated for serious but non-life-threatening injuries. And I actually just got off the phone with someone from the FBI in Boston who tells me that uh, some folks from the FBI are currently at the hospital waiting to be briefed on the uh, imminent condition of this suspect. So we hope to bring that uh, to our viewers as soon as I have any more information. But that's the way it stands right now. We do know uh, that he's alive, but no other details from the hospital have been released at this time. And the interesting thing is actually this suspect is currently being treated in the very same hospital that his older brother, 26-year-old Tamerlan Sarnayev, was treated at uh, before he ultimately died Friday after a long gun battle uh, with authorities. And of course, he is, that was the second suspect in this case. Now, uh, despite all the twists and turns in this manhunt throughout the, the last uh, several days, what ultimately did in 19-year-old Sarnayev was a, a flapping tarp on a boat. And I just want to show you a street view that I uh, grabbed from Google Images. This here is Franklin Street in Watertown, Massachusetts, where the final moments of uh, the takedown of the suspect happened. The house there on the left is, uh, is where the homeowner walked out of his yard, followed a, uh, a trail of blood over to that boat that you see circled on your screen. And he noticed um, not only was the, the flap of the tarp flapping in the wind, but he also noticed a trail of blood on the boat. He took a peek inside and his stepson describes that he saw a bloody object curled up in a ball on uh, the ground of that boat. The man then went inside his home, called 911, and it only took minutes for hundreds of uh, law uh, enforcement authorities to uh, swarm the area and they ultimately did uh, capture the subject, Brian. Now we are getting uh, a lot of reaction today and in fact the Boston Red Sox are playing a home game today in Fenway Park where thousands of people are gathered and there was actually a very uh, a quite beautiful tribute that happened during the national anthem. Have a look at this. So great moment there, Brian. It seems Bostonians are, you know, healing through baseball. Lots of law enforcement uh, officials there on at the uh, stadium, including some victims of uh, the uh, marathon bombings. Also, Brian, we are hearing some reaction from the uh, the suspect's families. We spoke to uh, an uncle who he yesterday said uh, the boys have brought some shame to his family. Today, he's actually saying that he has been estranged, estranged rather, from the family since 2009. Uh, take a listen to the reaction today that I pretty much denounced my relationship with them because I saw there is a wrong way, I mean, the, the way they were bringing the, the children up. It was mostly their mother. I just didn't like how that, that the concept of dishonesty was just uh, used among the children. And this potential, you know, concept of dishonesty that the uncle talks about is something, no doubt, the investigators in this case, Brian, will be looking into to find out any details they can in terms of why these two brothers did this, how, and whether anyone else is involved. Thanks for this, Beatrice. You're welcome. Beatrice Vaisman in our Toronto studio.